Okay, so now we're looking at first what we just did, which is taking what is a roof block and would normally I would pull back through to load up power. He might be able to put up a roof block of his own because we're matching each other in timing, so we're canceling each other out. And so we find a structural uh, answer to that, which is to add arcos or florete type of uh, motions. We're off of my roof block. I go into a curve and I hit him on the half beat, and then I'm still ready to meet his returning shot <clears throat> with a backhand. So I'm giving myself a structural advantage that allows me to hit with half beat. Uh, the same thing can be for the backhand. It's a little, I would say slightly more awkward, but it can work. Where I can deflect here and I can come back. I don't know. I'm going to say no. It's not, now that I do it, it's not really that awkward. And if you really open it up and bring it up, like bring it around your head, where, where it can be awkward is if I'm here and I try to do a little wrist twirl there, but notice it's already past him and I'll miss him. So why put the arco in there if it's not going to hit him? So what I will say is for the backhand, you have to open it up more. <clears throat> if I keep it tight, it misses anyway, and why did I do it? So from here, it's here, open it up, and now you see it's basically a return. It's a circle in return. So yeah, there's, there's ways of doing it that are a bit more uh, functional. <clears throat> now we're gonna go forward into uh, middle range, medium range, where we can use the alive hand to stick to him, and that's gonna be the goal of this exercise. So when he attacks, I mean, we might even start at Largo where we're hitting, and I've got to break my way in. Boom, and I'm here. Boom, and then it's going to be continuously, boom, very, uh, you might even attack low, and I can get here, you know, boom, you're hollowing out. And the idea is just to be very, I'm going to say, touchy feely with, with the alive hand to where at that range, you're training it to be an automatic reflex to check that hand, to immobilize it, to clear it. And in the meanwhile, this weapon hand is doing its own thing. It's staying very busy. And what you train over time, and you, you get part of this from doing some burrata and stuff, but this is not an organized drill. He can do whatever he wants and I gotta deal with it. Sometimes when I throw something, I don't have an immediate response to it. I gotta get out of the way of it. But what it gets you to do is to use your alive hand and your weapon hand in concert, but they stay out of the way of each other. That's a big thing, is to be able to, um, to have them each do their job, but not clash. All right, and this becomes especially important when you have an edged weapon, a knife or something, that you definitely want your live hand to stay out of the way of your own weapon because you will cut yourself, okay? Now, one thing you will find is this. It is hard. It's harder than you're used to. In Sinawala and in, in, um, Sombrata, we get inside of ones and we do this kind of thing, but it is very hard to do that in real time. I might try to and I, yeah, I can barely get a piece of it, and so I have to let it go. So sometimes even in middle range, you're here, you gotta let that go and then deal with the return, all right? A next level after that would be where he reaches his alive hand up and I use that as an opportunity to go to what is really hubud range, just down to the corto, or just clear the arm, the alive hand, and hit him. So this would be the next level off of that. So first we are, we're here, we're just doing this. Boom, I, I can add half beat attacks as well. Boom, 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 here. Sometimes it's a follow through, other times on the back end, notice, it might just be a, like a, almost like a wood tick or like, a, like an open redondo, but a short one to hit on the forehand side again. You'll see that in some systems quite a bit, like the Kitty Tiersia. But now, as he's attacking, I'm here, boom, and then he puts his up, and then I have to clear this, and I'm hitting it. We go right back. Uh, like a one, yeah. Here, boom, boom, boom. I'm still being very touchy feely, but when I have to clear, I clear and I keep hitting. Boom. Boom, 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 yeah, clear it out of the way. That time I got it on the hand. It wasn't by design, but it was just what was there. And I might have to check, since so his was wide and mine was tight, all right? Sometimes you might pay a price for that too, but things happen. So what you realize also is when his arm reaches past your weapon, the flex of his wrist is still there, and that weapon, even accidentally, can do a little abanico with tick, wrap you on the skull, and then you just file that one away and say, okay, that can happen too. All right, so we're out here. Boom, I get inside. I break inside. Boom. Here, occasionally his alive hand comes up. I might clear it this way just to get out of the way and keep hitting. Boom. And then we keep going. What do you think would be your next level off of that? Disarm. That's right. So, yeah, it carries into disarms as well. However, we will prioritize and say that disarms move a bit down the list because you can make them happen sometimes. Uh, sometimes they're just there, but other times you can't really force it. 
trying to force a disarm really would tend to require closing on him entirely. Boom, like this. If you really have to make it happen, yeah, to make a snake disarm or something. <clears throat> but otherwise, you chase things that you can't catch up with, and you may fail and get hit for it or cut for it if you're trying to chase a disarm <clears throat> when it's structurally just not going to happen. All right, so he's attacking. Over here, I break in. Keep my own. That's all a lot of hand, very, very active. <laughs> All right, and then occasionally he might check, yeah. And now we're like this, where I didn't get a chance to clear up, but that was coming, so now I had to close inside, and then this is where we are. You know, this is where other things come in. And, exactly, so the change of range changes the options, and it's especially fun and interesting when you're using your live hand, but also when he starts to do it as well.